And it took time. Like it took a lot of personal work, a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, a lot of relational work with me, rebuilding the safety map. So by that, I mean, if, if you were brought up where the world was a dangerous place and people watching this who are struggling with addiction, most likely this was the case. We know this now. If the world wasn't safe, I couldn't be myself. I couldn't get my emotions out and express. Wasn't safe to say, I hate you. You know, I don't want to do that. Like you just had to bottle it all up. That will infect the body. It'll create toxicity in the system. And even though, um, even to last year, the, all the behaviors were in place, the healthy eating, um, the uh, addictive behaviors were shifted, um, exercise was there, self-confidence was there. There was still this deep cellular unsafety. And it got better and better over time. And even though we're in this house, I'm in my house right now, and I, he knows theoretically I am safe. Um, and even heart, you know, he knows my heart is with you. There was this deep, things are not safe, but over time and time this past summer, something dropped, something finally, boom. And for the first time ever, he was able to um, actually fall asleep with me walking around upstairs because our bedroom is under the main floor. Mm -hmm. Any little creak would startle, like, mm -hmm. right? And, and he just fell asleep one night with me roaming around doing what I do because I'm a night owl. And it, it literally, and it sounds so crazy because he's 40, almost 46, that was the first time that he actually felt settled at home because home was always unsafe. Right. So some people might be like, my God, that took nine years, <laughs> right? But here's the thing. It wasn't just one day and the next, that safety was slowly building and slowly building, getting safer or less dangerous and safer and less dangerous. And this is where couples, for example, if they know their partner has a history like this and you know you wanna stick with them, there needs to be that slow, we would call it titrated in Peter Levine's work approach mm -hmm. where you're rebuilding and you are literally um, creating a map that has never been done before for this person. They didn't mm -hmm. have that solid attachment, that secure attachment that attunement, that ability to express when they were young, um, it never got built. And a lot of people talk about rewiring, you know, the nervous system. Well, the difference with this kind of early trauma, I'm gonna use my hands. So for those just listening to this, what I'm doing is I'm dangling my hands. Rather than rewiring, there's wires that were never actually put together. Right. So Does it's that a make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So when the safety map wasn't written because our early experiences were so scary, it's not that we're rewiring something necessarily. We might rewire the behaviors of I've got to exercise, I have to eat better, I'm feeling that urge to eat that food, have that drink, click on that website. That might be the rewiring. But what drives that behavior is that early wiring of safety and self-regulation and connection that never got, it never got wired. Right. And right. so the story I just shared is the process of how to create that wiring and rewrite that safety map over time. Hello, this is Lynn Fraser with the Killaby Center Radical Recovery Summit. We are so excited to bring you the lineup for January 10th to 19th, 2020. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to see the new headliners for 2020 and to sign up. You can watch free January 10th to 19th or buy an all-access pass.